So, you've come to Planet Araxis and have filed to fight with the new conglomerate forces. You've made the right choice, folks. The Terran Republic are a bunch of fascists looking to take over the colonies by whatever means necessary. And don't even get me started about the Vanu sovereignty. Those technology-hugging religious fanatics would see us thinking in alien ways. Here, you fight for freedom, you fight for justice, and you fight for the very resources to further our people's survival. Now who's with me? Damn it. I'm just gonna go solo another base. For all the flack I might give it, Planetside 2 is one of those games I've just originally played and keep coming back to. It's also evolved over the years and has had not only new features, but now spans onto the consoles in the PS4. For those of you who haven't tried this game, Planetside 2 is an all-out Warzone MMO that spans four continental regions on the planet of Araxis. You choose to be a soldier for one of three major world powers. The traditional Terran Republic, the freedom-fighting new conglomerate, and the Vanu Sovereignty, each with a representative color, red, blue, or purple. Each world power starts with at least one-third of each continent during the conflict, and it's your job as a soldier to claim dominance of the map. After claiming an area, that entire region will be locked for a period of time. This is given to help equal out the maps and their populations, as well as to cycle the board. Now, what makes this game more fun and crazy compared to other shooters that you'll play is basically that it's an MMO. There are hundreds of people on the same continent at the same time as you. And as in any MMO experience, it's best played with a group of people that you may know. And if you pick the right classes and tools for the job with your group, you can hold your own. Of course, even if you don't have a full team of troops at your side, you can still take one or two people across the countryside and gather resources and take smaller areas linked to your own. Of course, the game's greatest strength is also its greatest flaw. The game is very conflict-driven, but it's also dependent on the amount of players that are involved. Sometimes you'll be in an overly chaotic area with hundreds of troops at the same time vying to survive for at least several seconds while trying to take an objective. Such scenarios can work to the game's strength if you try to plan around them. However, in some cases, you end up spawning into a meat grinder. There are times where there are defending troops that are well held up in a base, ready to take out anything that comes at them. Or there's the flip side, having not that many people to fight. I mean, sure, it's kind of cool if you're able to kind of sneak in and take over a base by yourself, but I can't count the times that I've found myself running into a base that was only occupied by one or two people while the rest of them were off fighting that epic battle. There are also times where I've gone into some areas where you might end up with no close spawn point and that one sniper catches you off guard when you're miles away from where you should be. Huh. Maybe no one's home. Fuuuuck. Yeah. Regardless, you have a lot to play with, upgrade, and you can do so without spending a dime. You start by picking a class, which you can switch up whenever you want later. Infiltrators are the stealthy snipers with the ability to hack and cloak. Light assaults are the jetpack using light weapon users. Combat medics are the healing soldier. Engineers are the turret setting mechanics. And the heavy assaults are the rocket launcher using soldiers with a shield. There's also the Max, which is the more vehicle than man, which is a walking heavy arsenal of rockets and railguns. However, that one also requires special resources you would use on vehicles to spawn. Now, you're not just stuck with the same gun for every class. You are able to buy and upgrade different weapons that you can get using points you earn in combat. The same goes for upgrading the vehicles that you can find in the game as well. Cars, tanks, APCs, planes, all with their own guns and weapons meant to transport yourself or a team into the fray. Some of the newer vehicles also allow you to craft bases on the field. Now with all this customization in mind, you may also want to find your own style of play. I obviously play as one of the soldiers with the rocket launcher. I also enjoy riding around in a tank. However, when you're first getting started, I might suggest just using the ATV to drive around. It seats up to two people, and it lets you get across the field quickly. The last thing that I want to talk about involving this game is the microtransactions. The game lets you buy daybreak points, which is the game's cash shop currency. 
You can use this to unlock things in the game, however, you don't have to. The game also lets you unlock cosmetics using these points alone. Your voice, your armor, your custom camo, all of this comes from the customization found in the shop. If you're going to play this game in the long term, and you plan on setting yourself apart from others, you may want to drop a few dollars. Otherwise, this game pretty much lets you earn anything mechanically through the use of playing the game. This is how you do microtransactions correctly. Anything that you earn in the game is accessible by other players. And the amount of customization in this game is staggering, so there's no real pay-to-win model. Now, the only flaw in this system that the game has are its experience boosters. By supporting the game with a subscription, you get a 10% experience boost. You also end up with a small stipend of daybreak points as an incentive. However, there are also nano boosters which you can recharge that give you additional experience. Now, my experience in the game is that you don't really need these at all. If you participate in a few good fights throughout the course of the day, you'll probably go up and level pretty quickly. Now, how do I think of this game overall? I like it. It's a fun game to spend time with in bursts. And if you have friends to play with, it's a blast. This has been Deckard Spade. Thanks for staying a while to listen.